What you're watching is a videotape of women who make a living taking it off. Taking it all off, in this case. Hundreds, even thousands of women and some men spend their days and nights making cold, hard cash by taking off their clothes. But what do their families think of the fast found money? Please meet Carol. And with Carol, her 14-year-old granddaughter, Shannon. You look too young to have a granddaughter. <laughs> Carol is worried about her own daughter, Tammy. She says that Tammy is a tramp for taking oh her clothes gosh. off for men. And she honestly, th that's your words, right? Yes. Those are her words. I didn't put them in her mouth. Yes. She also thinks she's an embarrassment to everyone in the family, especially her own granddaughter, Shannon. Tammy is with us, and she's going to join us in a minute. Carol, what is this? This is a very nice family, right? Yes, it And is. now there is Tammy in the family. How long has she been stripping, and why are you against it? Well, Sally, I think it's been about five years. And ever since she started this, she, her whole attitude has changed. Um, her personality, the way she dresses. Um, she didn't take care of the kids properly. She would leave them alone at night, and uh, she'd go out and... How many children does she have? She has three, but since she had the um, three of them, one of them is now living with their father because she couldn't get custody because of having um, the child, uh, I mean, with being on drugs and stuff like she had gone on drugs. Did you think she went on drugs because of the world of stripping? Yes, <laughs> very much In so. other words, caught up in the nightclub life, and the fast money. Yes. Is she still on drugs? No. She's not. No. But because of the drugs, she lost one of the three children? Right. The court wouldn't give her custody of the baby because of having the drugs problem. All right. You say that it's changed her personality. How has it changed her personality? It has. She gets, she's really mean. She doesn't get the proper rest, and she's screaming and yelling at the other two all the time. True. She doesn't, Sally. She. She'd come home and she'd yell at us. If she had problems at work, she'd come home and take it out on the kids. She'd get really angry. How old are you now? 14. Okay. What was your life like with mother as a stripper? Um, it was really hard for me because I'd go to school and I'd get made fun of because people would know. And I mean, there were days where I'd go home crying and my mom would tell me to ignore it. I mean, it's hard to ignore when people at school are telling you, you know, your mom's lousy, she's nothing, or whatever. It's hard. All right. Did mom leave you alone at night? Yes, she did. When she'd go to work and then she'd go out, she'd get drunk and then she'd come home. Um, I raised my sister for a while when my mom was doing drugs or whatever. She, um, she... She oh. would leave the children home alone. <laughs> and from what age? From, like, the youngest one that was. So two of the girls were home alone. And one was nine, one was 11. And they would be left alone. And she more or less raised her sister because she... T that's why she's so mature now, because she actually took She's care. very... You're very grown up for somebody who's 14. She's very mature. All right, a bad childhood. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> a bad childhood because you were left alone a great deal of the time, a lot of teasing in school, what have you done about that? Do you still live with mother? No, I live with my dad now. Is that better? <clears throat> yeah. Does your sister live with your dad now? No, my sister lives with my mom. She still is there. And my other sister lives with her dad. Okay. And Tammy's a really super nice person, and she, and she means well and everything, but since she started doing this kind of work, it just changed her whole personality. She just... Um, How has this affected you? I'm devastated. You are? Yes. I have two other daughters, and they, they, um, they don't even like it, and they're, feel, they're embarrassed by it as well. And I don't think Tammy would have did this, but she was in a hardship at the time, and uh, it was a fast way to make money and big money. And now that she's on it, it's hard to get off. And I remember one time I lent her like $2,000. She come and said she needed some money, so I gave her $2,000, and I didn't know it was going to drugs. And then I let her use my credit cards because she said she needed to travel back and forth. And um, then she'd buy cartons of cigarettes at the gas station and sell them for drugs. And there was just a lot of things. And it changed her so much since she'd been on these drugs and dancing. And I know the dancing's what caused it all. 
And in your life, that as a mother, obviously you feel very, very badly about this. Yes, and you I as do, a daughter. She wasn't raised that way at all. She. Let's find out about what led her to do this. Come on out, Tammy. Tammy, you heard that both your mother and your daughter, what they have said. Is it, first, is it true? Did you leave her alone a yeah, lot? Yeah, but they're talking about the past, Sally. They're talking about two and a half years ago, okay. when I first did start dancing, when I was on my drugs, when I was leaving my kids alone. For two, the past two and a half years, I've remarried. I've straightened my life out a lot. She I has. have been clean. She has. I come home every night. I do not leave my kids home alone now. I regret what I did, and I admit I was a bad mother. I did do you a do lot of things. It. All right. But now, what's I, bothering them now is the stripping. I'm not going to quit. I enjoy dancing. I enjoy. <laughs> I need to make money. I need to make money. If tell me what. Yeah, tell me what money, led he? you to do this. Your mother says you don't need to do it, and your daughter says you don't. Why do you say you do? Because I've learned to live having so much money that it's hard. When, when you buy things, and you're used to having them good things, and you don't want to give them good things up. Even if it makes the family embarrassed, even I'm if 31 years old. I'm an adult. As long as I take care of my kids, all right, could she give it up now? I don't think she can. You don't I think, think she, she should, can. but I don't think she can. Can she financially? You said you're married. Does he work? Yeah. I think she could he financially. He makes a lot. He makes good money. He is a truck driver, and he makes good money. All right, now, why, if he's a truck driver, couldn't you get a job, and the, together the two of you have enough money to That's live decently? He just started doing this in driving truck in January for a year and a half. I took care of my family financially. Forget that. Would could you give this up or are you absolutely addicted to what it is that you're doing? Maybe with some support I maybe could. Maybe. Do you want to give it up? I want to. But? I want to. Then why haven't you? It's I think it's more important um, to have the stability as far as the children having their mother around. I only more have often. one there. She accepts what I do. But if I'm willing to if she was willing come, to come home, home, if she was willing to come home and live with me, she had a yes, apartment. yes, I could say maybe yes, the I would quit. The only reason you know I don't want to come home because we cannot get along for one, and for two, Sally, I don't like the town that she lives in. I don't like the people there. I cannot get along with them. I don't like it there. And she does not understand that. I don't want to go to the schools. I don't, I don't She doesn't like want there. to go to the schools because she's going to be teased. But if I'm not doing it anymore, she's not going to be teased. What are you thinking? Nothing. Yes, you I just, I don't know. I mean, I asked to live, with, I don't live with my mom now, is because of those reasons that I had told you. I asked to live with my grandmother so I could live closer to my mom, so I could see her once in a while. But she refuses to let me live with her. Who, Grandma? Yeah. Yeah, I'd like her to live with me. I think it'd be nice. I think rather than having her crew out in Las Vegas. You mean there's another grandmother? No, me. No, she, she wants, wants to live, live with me. her, and I won't allow it. Okay. Well, even though it makes well, me happy, she would not allow me to Because it's not my mother grandma. raised her kids. It's not my mother's responsibility to raise my kids. I would raise my kids. I would quit dancing. I reset. You only have one. You have three. You're missing two. So I, have, I have two of them at home right now. Okay, I have one at home with me. And I have one that I get every summer, all summer long. Oh, so you're a summer mother. All right. All right. You, I know welfare. You certainly, Tammy. <laughs> When you went out to strip, tell me your, help us to understand your situation when you first started to strip, because I'm going to ask you to talk to other people who are at that crossroads. When, when I, I got out of a very abusive marriage. All right, you're in an abusive I left, marriage. I left my marriage with my three children and No I money. Pardon me? And you had no money? No, I had no money. I lost my job <laughs> because of my ex-husband. Okay. Her, I was a secretary. I made good money. I left, I packed up from California and I came home and I tried taking care of my kids. I got welfare and he was court ordered to pay $897 a month spousal support and child support. As long as he paid $1, they would not give me anything from welfare. Okay. Okay. So I went and got a job at Perkins during the day and I worked at another, at a bar, bartending at night. 
I worked two jobs. I had someone babysit my children. By the time I paid my babysitter at the end of that week, I still didn't have enough money to make it, and my kids weren't seeing me. So my girlfriend talked to me, said, Tammy, go down. I said, I could never strip. I could never do that. All never. Right. In I, other words, that wasn't I me. do believe that with the lack of equal pay for women that we do have in this country, that sometimes when you're left with children to bring up, and I know I've been there, that there's one gets desperate. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a heck of an education or a really special kind of skill, you'll do just about anything, I think, to uh, keep food on the I table. Can I continue to send out resumes. That today, I understand. I continue to send out resumes. But when I the lifestyle becomes, she said you didn't come home after stripping, you went out and you were drinking afterwards. That's a whole different thing than doing it for money and leading another lifestyle. I want you to help me with some other people. We're going to meet now um, young man Tracy, who told his fiancée, her name is Salsa, that it's either your job or me. Now, she's got to make a decision between the guy and the stripping. What she going to choose, we'll find out. My mother's very supportive of what I do as in how my mother found out was I was at a club. My picture was in the newspaper. So my mother kind of caught a glimpse of her daughter in the newspaper. Then we sat down, we talked about it. You know, everything was fine. She's very leery of it at first, of course, but she knows it's a very good profession. My parents don't know what I do. I'm not really concerned about my parents finding out. I did mention to my mom that I, I dance. I didn't get into the specific kind of dancing exactly. I do. Who isn't in front of for the money? I mean, otherwise, why would you know? Why would we really want to throw her clothes off? So, as we've been saying, sometime in your life, it's it can be really hard financially, and uh, there it is out there, all those quick bucks, but they're not so quick. You work pretty hard for them. Do you know that according to the Exotic Dancer Directory, there are over 2,500 gentlemen's clubs in the United States and Canada? Each club has anywhere from 20 to 150 performers. Now, that is an awful lot of clothes coming off. We've been talking so far with Carol Shannon and Tammy. Tammy has been doing this on and off for five years. She should know the lifestyle. It almost ruined her life. Carol says her daughter Tammy's career of stripping is degrading, demoralizing, and a big embarrassment to the family, as you can understand. But we're going to look now at a love story, sort of. What if it was your fiancé that came home and told you that your job was dancing naked in front of hundreds of men and he didn't like it? Well, meet Tracy. Tracy, you know how Carol the mother feels, don't you? Yes. Okay. He has a fiancé named Salsa. She's an exotic dancer. Tracy says he can't stand the fact that Salsa's main goal at work is to get men sexually aroused. That's what it's about. No denying. Salsa's backstage and will join us in a minute. Tracy, when you first started dating her, did you know that's what she did? She was a stripper? Yes, I did. I, uh, I met her through a, uh, a friend that was dating her at the time. And when I met her, she was... <laughs> Well, that's not true. They had broke up, and I had met her. Right. Well, at the time, she was really had a you know hard time going. Um, she was alone. You know, she had no place to go and stuff. And um, I don't know what you want me to say, but she, uh, I knew that she was a dancer. You did know. Yes, yes. Yeah, I want you to say whatever you want to yeah. say. I don't want you to say anything that's right for me. I'm just trying to find out. Okay. She was a dancer. She was single. She had children. Yes, yes. Very small children. Yes. What would, if you're going to date a dancer, do you date one with the thought, I'll change her? You know, a lot of women want to change men. Are you the kind of guy who well, is going to get this girl and I'm going to take her out and really change her? Well, maybe that was my goal, yes. Aha, uh -huh. okay. That's Pygmalion type <laughs> stuff, and I don't know if it really works. Well, I'm, I'm a real self, you know, uh, jealous, um, controlling person already on top oh, of that. Oh, so you're not only going to change her, but you're... <laughs> yeah, you're, I'm going to control her. And, you're a yeah. controller, yes, and yes. you know that. God bless you for knowing <laughs> it. Yeah, hey, I try. So, 
you quit her, you convinced her to quit dancing, you gave her an ultimatum, and now she wants to go back and do it again. She wants to go back into dancing. Is that true? Yes. She got angry at you because you didn't like her dancing, and she has just kicked you out of the house? Yeah. Where are you living now? Well, I'm kind of living in a Nissan Sentra. <laughs> okay. Which, 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 which is her car? It's her car. Yeah. Okay. okay. Question, do you have a, now I, we understand you were going to reform a dancer, she didn't want to be reformed, and she's kicked you out. Do, do you have a job? Are you yes, working? Yes, yes, I'm a mechanic. Oh. I have a job, and that was my goal, is to take care of her and her sons, and maybe we would live happily ever after. But obviously, I don't make enough money. Why? You don't make enough? Is that why you're living in the Nissan Central? Well, not necessarily. I have places to go, and I, I kind of stay at my sister's. Um, you know, I'm working you're, most of the day. You're kind of drifting around. Yes, exactly. Okay, let's hear from Salsa. Come on out, Salsa. Salsa, you were listening backstage and uh, you heard what Tracy was saying. Anything he said that wasn't right? Um, except for him living in the car. He, I mean, he has places to go. He just rather wants to be at home where wants, he should be. So he wants to live me. in the car. No, he wants to be with me at home. And so he chooses not to go stay at these people's places. And Have you, know, you thrown him out of the car, out of the house? Out of the house. I asked him to leave for a while until we can figure this out. I was getting too much fighting in the house with my kids. And Okay. Uh, you told our producers that he's made you feel like you're a street hooker. Is that right? <laughs> Basically. Okay. No trust. What, how did the dancing get started? Um, about four years ago, my kids were about six months old. And um, I was very... You say they're both the, uh, twins. They're twins. Aww. Okay. Yes, four years old. And um, I wasn't having any um, emotional support from anybody, families, their family, my family. And um, at the time, I was just needing to have some money. I didn't want to be on the public system, public assistance system. Wanted to do for myself. Like you Tammy's know? story, I'm getting the we, same we don't, story. We don't want, we're not prostitutes, okay? We don't sell our bodies. Nobody touches us. When we dance, nobody is allowed to touch us. We okay. dance on a stage. Let me, let me get on with it. We're not it. standing Salsa, on Salsa, you met him. Did you know he was trying to reform you? He's admitted he was trying to reform you. <laughs> no, I, I knew that he, the situation that he was in, that I had known him for four years, and uh, I knew that he was a very good father, because um, he has a daughter also, um, that a very good provider and just a, a man. And that's what I needed to have instead of the gentleman that I was meeting at work. And He's a real man. Yeah. He's a good provider yeah. and he's an excellent father. He's so <laughs> devoted to you, he won't leave the car in the front yard or the yes. backyard. Yes. It what it, is wrong with this that, guy? You tell me what's wrong with him. Um, just, he, he gets so insecure that, that I'm going to, he won't let me drive a van to work. Um, because he's afraid that I'm going to leave I in the middle of my one. shift and do that too. be doing sexual favors. It ain't favorites that, that she has <laughs> ever done anything to make me think that she will. I'm just like waiting for something to happen, you know. You know in your head that what you're doing is wrong by being possessive. That's where counseling comes in. <laughs> has the counseling helped? Well, well not, we we just were started making and I'm trying to get that going. Yes. But you do know what's right or wrong. You can't live with him. Why? You want to go back to stripping? Oh, yeah. I'm, yes, I'm definitely going to go back. Um, There's no other way you can support your children? Well, I'm going to medical school, and I'm also in uh, John Casablanca's modeling. And, um, I mean, I'm, there's other things I am doing. Another reason why I get so... How do you so get into... Have you gotten into medical school? Um, yes, I'm going to. Um, I'm going back in the fall. I stopped during the summer. Um, it is a, a vocational to be an MA x-ray tech. Right? Yes. To so be an, that I can an X-ray tech. Yes. Can you do that and strip at the same time? I could if I chose to. I feel that I would probably get enough benefits at that time uh, to cover childcare costs for two children and stuff. Right now, when I work, he takes care of the kids at night. But even though and he's and in the car. That's what's really hard. No, I mean before. <laughs> before all this, this yeah. only came about last week. 
you know, the last Couple week where weeks. she decided to go back to work with uh, with me with or without me. Mm -hmm. And that's the hardest thing is because like she her mainly she works Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you know, weekends Nine where I'm with the kids and I can't go to the club and make sure, you know, for myself to feel better about myself. And you can't so go out we've and do got, oh, yeah. as far as I can see, we've got Shannon who would like to come live with a grandmother. Grandmother's embarrassed by Tammy. Tammy is thinking, how the heck would I give this up? But she doesn't, I don't think she really wants to. Tracy wants to get back in the house and take care of Salsa. And Salsa <laughs> wants to go to medical school. <laughs> Salsa, the world of stripping. Are you caught up as Tammy was in the nightlife? In I don't do drugs. I have never drank. And so even when I go out socially, I don't. My, my whole social life, the things that I do, I will save my money all winter to go to concerts during the summer. That is, that is what that's, I do. That's what we don't, I think. We when... don't go out to Copper Penny and... You know, I've never been the type to do that. When she know? goes off to work, like an hour before work, she turns into a total different person. Yes. And it's like, I, I want this. Does. What do you mean she I, turns I want, into yeah, a different person? Yeah, you got to get into person. into yourself more than anybody else. And that's what I'm wanting is for her to... Attention. Attention to me Attention. before she goes because I ain't going to see her for five, six hours. My and that might make and, him okay. feel more secure. If I did do that for him, it might make and, him feel better. And I when I, can't. you know, like what I feel is when she goes to that club, it's when, you know, because there's strippers and there's dancers, mm -hmm. you know, and I know in my heart that she is a dancer. And I feel like when in Rome, do as the Romans do. You know, you That's go in thing. and, yeah. You have to change into a different person, Sally. I get very introverted you because have to. You I, don't have to. I don't let those gentlemen get the part of me I share with Tracy. Right. So I take that time to prep That's myself, right. and I am a, a, a dancer. Stripping isn't the only profession where women take their clothes off, of course. You're going to meet a woman now who's given up a college scholarship to fulfill her dreams. We'll meet Amber and her mom when we come back. We make our money. It's not like we're having sex with any of the guys. We're normal people just like anybody else. Money's great, but also I love dancing. I love being able to socialize with people. It's free, you know, you feel real free when you dance. So that's what got me into it. We don't look like this every day. <laughs> no, we do not go home every night with a different boy. We go to work, we go home. We, you know, do our thing. We're not hooked on drugs. We're not all alcoholics. We're here to make money and make ourselves a better future. Well, some are. Today we've been talking with women who say they strip for a living. Actually, they're kind of proud of it. It's the problem with the family members, and in our case, a fiancé. Connie says that when her daughter Amber was growing up, she had dreams of going to college and becoming a soccer superstar. God bless that it's a girl. In fact, Amber could have been on the World Cup soccer team. That dream never came to be. Connie, she got a soccer scholarship to college. She yes. could have done it. Yes. What happened? Um, Amber has always said ever since she was little, I am going to be famous. I am going to be a movie star. I said, fine, get out there and kick the soccer ball and keep practicing. No, I didn't say that. Yes. <laughs> uh, no, she uh, always wanted to be a movie star, and that's fine. She was excellent in not only soccer, but also track. Uh, went on to Junior Olympics in the Nationals in track when she was younger, in running and also race walking. So when she was in high school, just fantastic, was on all-star teams, uh, voted MVP. Well, she was just great at it. Um, she was voted MVP. Great. You know, so here she gets a scholarship. She goes to college. How long did she stay oh, in school? Oh, that was about three weeks. <laughs> three yeah. weeks? She left school to do what? Well, she said, I can't do it. I don't want to do this. I do not want to go to school. And I said, OK, here's the rules for this house. You go to school for at least one year. Give me that. Go to school. Do your best for one year. If at that time, you don't like school, then we'll sit down and talk about it. 
but you will go to school one year to live here. No, I won't. So her father, who lives in Cincinnati, northern Kentucky, same as Cincinnati, um, said, come on down here and get into modeling, and I'll work with her, and I'll send her to school part-time at UC, where is an, another place she can also play soccer. And he said, I'll send her part-time and get her back into it slowly. Did she do that? Uh, yes, she went down there, and she does some modeling still. Uh, she met a young lady there who said, I can get you into Hollywood doing some small films, uh, Playboy, Playboy shots, and that's basically where we're at now. She wants not to go to school, not to play professional soccer, not to go to the World Cup. She wants to model nude for Playboy. Yes. That's and, what she wants out of life. And this is a young lady who was an excellent, excellent How does this athlete. make you feel as her mother? I hate to see somebody waste that kind of talent. Um, not everyone can step out and be a natural athlete. Not everyone can run. But in her in heart, she wants her, her big thing is nude yes. at Playboy. Her big thing is to be famous. Her big thing is to be a movie star. And she sees other movie stars who have made it through the Playboy route. Only and, one or two. And not, Amber not all, no. If you, Playboy is exactly. almost as old as I am. Exactly. And there's been a girl or a couple of girls every month. So exactly. we're talking about one in a million. She's here. very stubborn, very strong-willed, and she feels this is the fast way to get there. Yes. I just wanted to say to you, you are not a mother, yes, all right? You, you see how, how first house. of all, I'm talking, hold up, hold you up. You don't live in my household. You see, you already hurt your daughter already by leaving them with your two kids. You see she want to be with her grandma, that make her happy. You still, you are selfish. You just do, you do not want to see your kids happy. What is wrong? Amber, we want to talk to you. Come on out. Amber. Yeah. I don't think any of us have a problem with wanting to be rich and famous. An awful lot of people want that and, and, and really understand that kind of drive that it takes. It also takes unbelievable amount of work. But your mother is extremely disappointed about your choice in careers. Yeah. Well, first off, I, I do want to say that, you know, um, my goal was not just to be, you know, pose nude for Playboy. That wasn't my whole life. Um, I want to be an actress. The goal? I want to be an actress. That was my stepping stone. Okay. Why not go to acting class, good acting classes like they have around the country, get into small roles off-Broadway, off-Broadway, small roles, repertory companies, and really study your craft day and night. Why go the sexual route? Sally, um, can I say something Amber real quick? Amber? My dream is to be an actress. That is my dream since I've been like this, okay? Nice. And I don't think I could ever pose nude for Playboy. I couldn't, I could I don't even like people seeing my body. I don't care if it was my boyfriend or whatever. I don't, I like to well, she's saying what I'm have saying. my body to myself. Amber, Absolutely. If I had a body and, like and, that, I'd do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd do it too. Amber, why not I study? Well, you know, and, and that's your, and Shannon, and that is your choice, and I totally respect that because a lot of people believe that way. And I look at it like this. There's, there's a lot of things that I wouldn't do. Magazine-wise, there's a lot of men's magazines out there that makes me sick. But Playboy is very respected, and, um, and I think, you know, most people do it like that. And, and, I, and I understand if, you know, a few people out here don't like it, you know, but um, it's actually a men's and women's magazine. There are mm -hmm. plenty of women have subscriptions to Playboy. It's very respected. Yeah, that's right. I still didn't get an answer to the question. Well, I'm Why sorry, not go to acting school? There are tons of them that are very good. Why not go to repertory theater? Why not work off-Broadway? Why not work around the theater? If that's your life, why not learn your craft? Well, I, my answer, yeah, my answer to that probably will not be liked, but I want it now. I want to go now. But you're never going to get it now, because if you can't act, you'll never get it. Doesn't that make sense? Well, I, I, it's, it's not that I haven't been. There's a craft to acting. Right, absolutely. You only learn that if you built a set, scrubbed floors, walked up and down the aisle, passed out tickets. Amber, Amber, are you already in a movie? Are you already in a movie? The day you walk on stage and slam a door and the set wiggles is the day well, you're out. And really it doesn't quick? wingle if you brought if you built it. Right. Um I just got back from LA and my very first audition, I got a lead role. Right. So um, yeah. I think natural talent. Yeah. 
What is the lead role in? Um, it's called, it's, it's, it's going to be on HBO and Cinemax. It's a new series, and it's called Erotic Confessions. And it's, um... <laughs> We're and talking soft porn here, absolutely child. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Nothing above, nothing, um, nothing below the waist. Everything above the waist, and it's, uh, it's, it's just. It, okay, it's, somebody it's else made. talk to her. I'm losing it. There's <laughs> um, a lot of people out here that would like to go to school with scholarships and can't go. How can you give up a scholarship, an education, a pose new for Playboy? They drool over all the magazines. Playboy is not just respectful, but it's respecting yourself and your family because it's disrespectful for your family to walk in the street and people see a magazine, oh, that's her daughter. Hi. That's right, I agree, I agree. Go ahead. My question's for, my question's for I Tammy. Agree. I agree with you, but you can't, we can't live for our parents. We're, we're growing up, okay? We can't live for what our How do you know she's not gonna go uh, farther sure. and make more I'm money than a scholarship? I'm daughter. embarrassed when I walk down the street and say, oh, I saw her stripping last night. That embarrassed You ought to be yeah. embarrassed in the outfit you're in right now. I would be you too. Can't you see how bad way, Shannon's hurting? My heavens, you're disgraced to motherhood. I've seen a lot worse mothers than yeah, but you. My kids have a clean house, my kids have food, food and my health. kids have a car, and my but kids have a nice neighborhood. But they don't live with you. Neighborhood. They don't live with you. Yes. I just have a comment for Amber. Amber, I think you're a beautiful girl, but let me be honest with you, there are a lot of beautiful girls out there. There really are. So, I mean, you may have a lot of... Some can girls. act and some can't. Exactly, but there are a lot of beautiful girls that can act. So I really think that you should go on with your life and try to find some other ways of doing it. But she's... she's I, I, I feel that I... <laughs> we'll be I right back. I know what you're saying and that, that's... that's... <laughs> you are the fuck. You're the fuck, Steve. Okay, it's the guy's turn, in case you think this is an only a woman thing. I want you to meet Scott and his fiance, Cheryl. Cheryl is pregnant, right? Five months? Four months? Scott says it's been his lifelong infatuation to take his clothes off for screaming excited women. <laughs> Cheryl says they're gonna be married, I think, in two months with a baby on the way and a wedding. If Scott takes it off, she may take off. Uh, <laughs> Let me ask Cheryl first, is this a, uh, just an ego trip for you, for him? Not for me, for him, because look at him. He, he, thinks, <laughs> he thinks he's all that anyway, and I think that that would boost his ego a little bit more. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, I mean, I think he looks good, right, right? Yeah. But he, he just needs to know it, you know what I mean? And you don't want him to do it? No. All right, why do you want to do this? It's just been something that I thought might be exciting, you know? I, I like to live a fast-paced, exciting life. If it's a choice between her and the baby and male stripping... There is no choice there. Good for you. Sit down. Great. <laughs> Maybe our uh, next guest can help us understand the world of stripping and taking it off. Please welcome Heidi Matson to the show. Heidi has written a book. It's called Ivy League Stripper. Now, when Heidi thought of stripping, she thought it was a world she would never get into. Not your world at all, right? Oh, no, it's prostitutes and sleaze, isn't it? Well, I would think some people no, think so. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. It was the stereotype. And uh, when this idea came into my mind, it was after years of financial aid troubles, the whole, the regular story. And uh, I'd heard an ad for one of these places. I remember being offended by that ad. How can they advertise on the radio? It's prostitution, it's sleaze. Here I was a few weeks later, had a financial crisis happening, and the idea came back into my mind, and I immediately chastised myself. How could I possibly even consider that? I must lack morals to even think of it. And in the next moment, I thought, well, you don't know what, you, what you're thinking of. You don't know anything about it. You're reacting out of fear and ignorance. And I don't want to spend my life doing that. So I called the place, and I went over there during the day and had an interview. And it was a job interview. And it was clean, and it was... Um, completely legitimate. But I didn't believe it. I still, I took it a minute at a time. I now, came what did you evening. need this money for that you couldn't get any other way? Well, I had been waitressing. I had been scooping ice cream. Uh, I had a house cleaning business for three years, all while I was putting myself through Brown University. Okay. 
So you were working extremely hard. Every time your money didn't come through, you even left Brown. Went I left Brown for three cleaned years. houses, got the money, went back to Brown, right. which is an Ivy League school. Right. Right now, you need the money, and you're completely out, and this you go is, on the job interview. Right, it's halfway through a semester, and and I really didn't feel like leaving again. I'd left for three years already, and I, I figured I'd have to waitress again, or I'd have to leave. Well, this idea of the strip club came into my mind, and being a rational person, I felt I should explore it. And certainly, it would take about two minutes, and I'd be confirmed that yes, this was prostitution, this was sleaze, something that I couldn't be involved with, and that's what I went there for. I got there, and I saw something very different. And as I explored it, minute by minute, waiting for the sleaze to come out, it didn't come out. And but now you will admit that there's all kinds of clubs. There are all I kinds have been of clubs. In one, I have been in a number of them that I would, cons doing shows that I would consider amazingly sleazy. Absolutely. The so stereotype exists for a reason. So you found the one up there. <laughs> where, where's Brown in uh, Providence, Rhode Island? Providence, Rhode right. Island. And I found a place called the Foxy Lady. And yes, I was lucky. I walked into this place. Now, how and did it you was... tell your family, Brown by day, sle uh, <laughs> strip by night? I, I told them two years later <laughs> when my book was getting ready to be sold. So you wrote a book about it. Yes. Good for you. All right. I just wanted to say to Shannon that you're a very pretty girl. You, ha you have a good head on your shoulders, and you're going to go far. And I don't know your name. Sulfur. I had a different opinion at the begin opinion of you at the beginning, but I think you also have a very good head on your shoulders, yeah. and that you should stay in the business if you really like it, and you are doing it for yourself and your kids, like to further them, not yeah. just for pleasure and stuff like that. Right. And since your name is Salsa, he must be a tortilla chip. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can help the families and couples come to an understanding about what is help happening here. We'll do that when we return. Just so you should know, Heidi's mother was absolutely, uh, her reaction was not great. She was not pleased with her daughter stripping, nor was she pleased with the book. And now she's turned around and become involved with the book. So we're going to ask Heidi's advice and also to give advice. Welcome family therapist Isabel Richards to the show. Uh, Isabel, you've been listening to each story. Yes, I have. What goes on in each case? Well, I think with uh, Shannon and her mom, I think that to assume that the behavior of, of a mother doesn't have an impact on an adolescent daughter, I think that's unrealistic. And it's not a moral issue. It's I not a moral issue. I, I, took, I took responsibility for saying that. For, two, for a year, I was a bad mother. Okay, it's not, I'm I not never calling you a bad mother. Now. I'm for two saying, and a half years, what, I have straightened my life out. What happens with your daughter is that she gets hurt. She's at a time of life when she's beginning to blossom as a woman, and at that age, yeah. kids cannot deal with the parent's sexuality. I and it's a sexual that. job, you know? But my kids aren't exposed to it. I don't take my kids to work with me. I know, my but they know about it. See what and I she do. was teased about it. I know so that. that becomes a problem. All right, let's get to salsa first. quickly. In terms of, of salsa, I think what happened between the two of them, they got into some kind of a power struggle with one another. I don't think anyone has the right to control us, but I do think that what you have to look at is if you're in, in, in an intimate relationship with someone, there has to be compromise. It's not, I'm just going to do what I feel like doing. And in, in terms of Amber, I think that Amber is probably very talented, but she would probably be smarter to have something special that would make her stand out from the crowd. She's looking at the short-term results rather than the long-term results of we'll what We'll be right do. back. Heidi gives advice. <laughs> Yes, sir. Um, Sally, I have, there's some things in here that really aren't resolved. Um, 
what would you rather these women be? Would you rather they be people on the welfare rolls, or would you rather they Thank be taxpaying citizens Thank earning a decent much. living? That's, that's you see, fine. we get tricked back into a lot of things here. I find it interesting that this show is done in the United States. This show wouldn't be done abroad because sex has been demystified abroad. You're not going to have a whole instance of this being put out and saying that it's morally wrong because the moral out of it has been demystified. You're not going to have people tell you that sex is bad when they know it's a normal, natural function. This speaks to other things that would take several other shows to discuss. And it is the safest discuss. form of sex, you know, with abstinence. I mean, their visuals for men, you know, the spread of AIDS. We're not having any sexual contact. I don't so think for that's, excitement. That's what I weigh. If, if, I, don't, if I don't think it's a matter of that. I think that's it's a matter of how it affects your mother, your children, and how it embarrasses other My people. My mother's fine when she wants to. Heidi, <laughs> talk to Amber. I, I, think, I think that we can find a, a common thread here, a bottom line, and that is personal responsibility. And when you're a mother, you do have to admit that there, there may be compromises you have to make. And, and if it upsets a, a tender 14-year-old, you, you might want to make a compromise. But I already when, said I would. I understand that. When, when you're dealing with, with an equal adult, like in Salsa's case, I think Salsa really needs to be applauded here because she has decided what is right for her, what is good for her. I and don't want to go into this is. financial relationship That's with me point. having debts. And, and she, she knows what she wants. Those, I don't those know are if her I, I, I try and weigh the difference of welfare or dancing and making money and I working too. I tried to do the Fred Meyer money. thing. Yeah. I tried to do the grocery thing, you know, I've being a child care costs in nursing. Portland, Oregon. There, there's Salsa. no way you can make it at all. Salsa, the question is, or the issue is that, that you know what you want and you're happy with it, you're comfortable with it and you're responsible for your decisions and, and he needs and to respect that. that. You yeah. need to trust her and respect it. It has nothing to do with stripping. If she decided she wanted to be a fly fisher woman, <laughs> then, then you would need <laughs> to respect that. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Heidi, just quickly tell Amber uh, about getting an education or maybe she doesn't need one. Well, my, I believe everybody should do what's true to them, what okay. they feel is their passion. And Fair that's enough. what she's doing right now. You have a very good point, though, when you say that having something that would make you special, it makes you stick out, because I've experienced that. Dealing with the media, it, it really helps to have an angle, an edge. And you know, stereotypically, you're going to go to L.A. and supposedly be lost in a sea of other beautiful women. Now, if you believe in the stereotype and in the average, then you would want to go back to school and become something special and then try it. But if you believe in the extraordinary, as you do, you're going to go to LA, you're going to be 19 years old, you're going to take some chances and some risks, and you're going to have to live with those decisions. And that's your choice and that's your responsibility. So if that's what's right for you, go for it. Take a break. Heidi's book is called Ivy League Stripper. Uh, men grow cold as we grow old, and we all lose our looks in the end. See you next time. <laughs>